Despite some recent good news about the economy, this year has been a struggle for teenagers who need summer jobs. To bring us up to date is our guest from Action for Boston Community Development, or ABCD, the Vice President of Workforce Development, Mark Eisenberg. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Mark. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, I guess you've got two fronts to worry about here because there's the State House where there are some budget cuts, and of course, the federal government, and these affect teenagers in Boston. The federal government abandoned, really, summer youth employment and youth development activities uh, probably 12 years ago now. Uh, there has been a steady erosion of federal funding for youth programming. The, as a result of that, the state for the last number of years has continued to try to step up to the plate. Currently, uh, in the state Senate, there is um, an $8 million statewide proposal that's being discussed. There, the House had uh, suggested $5 million, and what we really need to see is somewhere in the order of about $11 million to keep us at the state level uh, fully funded for summer jobs for youth. The real problem is, and you've seen me year after year come to this studio, uh, the real problem is, is that we need to start moving beyond this every year, once a year crisis of funding for youth. And what I would implore the legislature, um, the governor's office to do is to really come around the table to figure out how we can develop a sustainable fund for summer youth uh, and at the state level it's known as uh, State Youth Works. I hate to ask you this question uh, again this year but uh, how big is your waiting list for these jobs now? The waiting list is probably close to about 3,000 youth. Um, and that's slightly down from last year because we uh, ended accepting applications early on. We didn't want to uh, put out false hope for the youth in the city of Boston. Of course, one of the things that's also habitual is the notion that, well, maybe summer jobs for teens are not as urgent as some other things, but that comes at the same time as we're saying we don't just want teenagers to stay out of trouble. We don't just want them to graduate from high school, we want them to move on to an even higher bar, so I guess that's... And I've yeah. said this before, Chris, and that is simply that um, summer youth employment is a rite of passage for any youth. You go out into the suburbs, um, it's a given. Um, there is a... there is less opportunity for youth because many of the job opportunities that were traditionally sustained by youth in the city are now being taken up by um, elders, older people, um, culling together their lifestyle. So that youth are not given the same opportunities in the cities that many youth are able to take advantage of uh, in other parts of the state. Well, aside from their maybe uh, needing the money right away or their families need the money, I guess what you also want to look at here is keeping a young person on track so that they, they finish high school and they do well enough to go beyond that. Do the summer jobs really make that much difference? They really do. Uh, studies have always shown that by constructively engaging youth during the summer through summer job opportunities, um, there is less of a learning loss. Um, for youth from one school year to the next. In addition, um, the skills, the job readiness skills that they learn on the work sites are uh, critical for them as they grow older and, and search for other job opportunities. The, we ran a study um, through with, in collaboration with the Center for Labor Market Studies uh, at Northeastern University and Andy Sum this past summer. And once again, it told us what we anecdotally knew all these years, and that is that by constructively engaging young people, the kids feel safer, they're able to feel as if they are contributing to their household income, 
they're looked up to by their siblings. The self-esteem factor alone is important for these youth. Um, and other than the fact that, yes, it does keep them off the streets of the city of Boston. You have some other programs you're also concerned about. Uh, you have uh, exploration of careers with, with students during the school year, and you have a sober school to help some kids who really need some attention. Correct. There are, there are, there are two um, alternative high schools that ABCD operates. Uh, one is for youth who uh, have fallen behind. They are over age and undercredited in keeping up with their regular um, schoolwork of their peers. Uh, they come to us and we try to catch them up uh, and keep them on track so that they can in fact graduate. We boast um, an 80% to 85% uh, graduation success rate for those youth. There is also uh, the Ostagai Recovery High School, which is a sober school uh, for kids who have experienced uh, interruptions in their education as a result of substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, and the like. It's a sober environment. Uh, not only is it a supportive environment with all of the uh, case management services that go along with serving this population, but also um, it is a school that helps accelerate their learning as well so that they can graduate at or near uh, their expected graduation route. Career Exploratories are a series of programs in medical field, early care and education, the building trades, that is an opportunity to expose youth to um, not only the classroom training, but the job experience, the internship, if you will, um, to expose them to careers in those particular areas.